one of my first memories ever was of the zigzag package under the couch in my dad's little brown box that he had and a little bag of green. My dad had a zigzag t-shirt, and so I always associated what was under the couch with my dad's shirt, and I was like, man, that zigzag must be something that means something, something good. Cannabis, for me, has always been a great experience. I've always loved the feeling of it. It's recreational nature, but also it's healing qualities on a whole bunch of levels. It makes people into happy people, you know? It really does, and, or it brings out the happiness that they already have inside of them. It shows them how to feel happy about the things they have. When I was 15, I got together with some friends in high school, and I thought they were like trying to make fun of me or something. They're like, oh, so would you ever think about trying weed? I was like, yeah. They're like, so would we. Let's go get some. So uh, <laughs> that's what we did. First time I ever came to cannabis culture, I came to buy a pipe, actually. I bought like a little green bubbler, and it was so cool. I was so like intimidated almost about how cool it was. You know, it was like all this crazy glass and stash cases, and when I walked into cannabis culture for the first time, everybody was lighting up joints all over the place. I had a degree in journalism, came out of university. I liked the activism side of things, and I wanted to find something that put my passion for activism and fighting for what's right and also be able to make money doing it. It was a pretty amazing concept. There's very few places that you can do something like that. I was, of course, a fan of Cannabis Culture Magazine because I was a big cron smoker. Dana Larson founded it with Mark Emery, Cannabis Culture Magazine, and it became a, a pivotal force for marijuana activism in North America and really became sort of a guide to activism. I have four deteriorating discs in my back, so like my back hurts all the time. I can't even get Tylenol 3. And their answer for pain relief for me is take an aspirin, or I get a half a muscle relaxer at night before I go to bed. We're here in the Cannabis Culture Vapor Lounge, and we think this is a very important place because unfortunately with the new legalization rules, they haven't really accounted for any place to smoke. Where are you supposed to smoke? You need some place to go, you need a consumption space. So vapor lounges are the only thing that makes sense. Places that you can go and smoke cannabis or vaporize cannabis. Like a restaurant or a bar or like in Amsterdam where they actually have coffee shops where you can go in and consume cannabis. You know, if we're gonna be like the, they wanna treat us like the alcohol people, well where's our cannabis restaurants? Where's our cannabis bars? We need places to consume. If it wasn't for this, I'd be laying at home in my bed crying because there's been nights that I've woke up in so much pain that I can't even move. That's an injustice that people, they have to go to the street to get this plant that they love, right? Instead of being able to go to a place like Cannabis Culture where we curate this amazing plant so you know that it's safe, you know it's good stuff. Our people grow some of the greatest cannabis you can get in the city of Vancouver and uh, that's why people come back to us.